What's up guys, TG back here with another video recapping and reviewing Season 4, Episode 5, When I Die, I Want Your Hands on My Eyes. This was a very sad and emotionally heavy episode, so let's get right to the recap. So the episode starts off with Alvarez getting a call about what happened in Oakland. Everyone meets at the clubhouse and Hank reveals that 5 are dead and 4 are in the ICU. Coco is among the five dead. I know some of you were hoping he'd survive, but I personally thought that he was definitely dead, and it is confirmed here. At a meeting, Conchie says that he thinks it could be Banquero for the desert incident with Randall, but Hank mentions the Sons of Anarchy. Alvarez does not think that Happy or the Sons would do that, but Easy doesn't trust them. Easy also says that he does not trust the other charters at this table. This causes an argument, and Alvarez has Conche go back to Yuma to take care of his charter. He also says that he wants everything locked down until they know more, and tells Easy he can't accuse other Mayan members as a VP. He also tells Easy that their next move can cause an all out war, but Easy thinks they are already in one. When the rest of the club finds out they have to stay down for now, they are not happy about it. We then go over to the house of Angel and Nails. Nails wakes up and starts painting the walls for her child. As she is doing this, she notices a drop of blood in the paint tray. She goes to take a shower and the blood gets a lot worse. We then see Miguel dig a grave for Thomas and afterward take a shower. Once he's done, his aunt tells him it is time for him to go because Martin will give up his location. So he calls someone and tells them that it's time. We then see Jess meet with her sister and is clearly upset because she knows that Coco's death is because she ratted the mines out. She doesn't want to be involved anymore, but her sister says that she has to keep spying. Gilly is taking Coco's death the worst out of all of the club members, and he's downing drinks at the bar. Angel joins him and says that they should go check in on Letty and Hope. Gilly says that he'll do it, but he's too drunk to even walk, so Angel does it for him. Alvarez is sitting at the table, and Hank walks in, telling him they got confirmation it was the Suns. Marcus says to keep the info between them, because he needs to get more information about exactly what happened. Back over to Nails, we see her trying to get to her car so she can go to the hospital, but she is in bad shape. Thankfully, Felipe arrives just on time to take her there. We then go back to Angel, who arrives at Coco's place. No one answers the door, but he walks in and the place is wrecked and Letty is on the couch. He tries to talk to her, but at first she's unresponsive and Angel doesn't really know what to do or say. He sits down with her and gives her food that he bought for her. Letty eventually starts talking to him and points out that Coco would have hated to see the place trashed, so Angel helps her clean everything up. At one point, Letty starts to break down and Angel does his best to comfort her. Eventually, she kisses him. And although he steps back at first, he quickly changes his mind and embraces it. Afterward, Angel leaves, but first tells her that the club is there for her if she needs anything. Luddy claims that she's okay, but it's clear that she's not. Back at the hospital, Nails wakes up and is told that she lost her baby. Felipe tries to call Angel, but he does not answer the phone. Nails is given the chance to hold her baby and say goodbye, which was a very sad and gut-wrenching scene. Easy is sitting inside the clubhouse when he gets a phone call from Emily. She warns him about the private investigators that approached her and may be after him. Easy keeps asking where she is, but she doesn't tell him and hangs up the phone. After the phone call, someone pulls up to the clubhouse and Easy pulls out his gun, but it's revealed to just be Manny. He said he heard about what happened and wants in on killing the sons. We then go back to Miguel, who says his final goodbyes to Thomas and then leaves. He gets picked up by someone and is given an envelope full of cash. Back at the clubhouse, Manny and Easy discuss the upcoming retaliation, and Manny says that Easy should lead them. We then go back to Letty again, and this time we see Hope. Hope is in her bed and tells Letty that she'll leave the next day, but Letty tells her not to. Angel arrives back at the clubhouse and is not taking the recent events very well. It's obvious he's in a lot of pain, just like the rest of the members, and is really going through it. I mean, Angel's an idiot sometimes, we saw it this episode, but it's hard to hate him with the acting performance that we saw in this episode, and I mean, ever since the beginning of the show. It's absolutely phenomenal. At the table, they are discussing the Suns, and Marcus says that they are too divided for an all-out war. He wants to find out who specifically was responsible and try to work something out. Creeper is the first one to speak up, saying they need to pay. Everyone seems to be in agreement, and Easy says that they need to act now. 
Izzy points out that one of the Sun's presidents, Packer, is on his last legs at the hospital, so they should go there. Taza says that it's a suicide mission, so Izzy says that he'll go and offers Angel and Gilly as well. They are all in, but it's decided that Gilly cannot be spared right now, so Manny offers to go instead. Alvarez says that if this goes wrong, it will affect a lot more people than just the ones sitting in that room. Easy counters by saying if they do it right, no one will ever mess with the mines again, and they also need to do it for Coco. Alvarez nods in agreement, and Easy ends the episode with, let's go to war. So I personally still loved this episode, even though it wasn't as fast-paced or action-packed as I thought it would be. This was an emotionally heavy episode that focused on coming to terms with Coco's death and planning on how to move forward. Between that and Nails, I mean, this was just a really sad one, filled with amazing acting performances. I feel so bad for Nails. I mean, not only did she lose her baby, but Angel is out there cheating on her while she is all alone. It's going to be rough for the both of them, and I don't see the relationship lasting after this. Also, a lot of the filler that some people complained about in episodes 1-5 through five was not really present in this one. This episode was really a bridge from Coco's death to the plan for retaliation, and I am so excited to see them carried out in the next episode. And I'm also happy that they had this episode focused on the coping with his death and planning out what to do next rather than just going right into the action. And now, since it is official, I'm definitely going to miss Coco. He was a great character and was on his road to redemption, and it is sad to see that get cut short. Richard Cabral was a great actor, and it is sad to see him go. Overall, though, this was a slower-paced episode, but still a really good one. I think it was better than the last few, and it really focused on the characters rather than the action. But I'm still looking forward to the upcoming war and the intense end to the season that we are going to get. That's all for this video going over Season 4, Episode 6. Be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed, and let me know what you thought of this episode down below in the comments.